Hello there, Net Club members. My name is David McLaughlin. Some of you guys might know me as the Off Duty Doctor from the Off Duty Wellbeing series that we've been running at the Net over the past couple of months. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about lockdown meltdown. So, we're going to be talking about the neuroscience behind why it is that this is a much more stressful time than usual what that might look and feel like, and what it is that we can do about it. So first of all, why is it that more of us are struggling right now than usual? Uh, well, there's some really obvious uh, answers to that question, like the fact that we're in isolation, uh, we've had a lot of us are facing challenges with our work, uh, our living arrangements, uh, but there's also some really interesting neuroscience behind it as well. So normally, when we are going about our day-to-day -day lives, we, we operate on autopilot a lot of the time uh, because we have a routine. And when we have a routine that makes us feel very safe, contained, um, but also it allows us to work on autopilot. And we use a couple of lobes in our brain, if you can see this, like our temporal lobe and our parietal lobe. And using these parts of our brain, like I said, it allows us to go on autopilot when we're on when we're kind of following our usual routine. Now, when we are not following our usual routine, we can't use these lobes anymore. We have to use our frontal lobes. Our frontal lobes are the one of the most sophisticated parts of our brain, where we integrate new information. Um, it helps us to interpret um, sensory input and to to plan how we're going to respond to that so when we encounter novel situations we have to use our frontal lobes much more than usual and that's what we're all doing right now because this is a very novel situation that we find ourselves in the only problem is our frontal lobes are a finite resource there's only so much that they can do the other function that your frontal lobes have is regulating your emotions. So if I crack open this brain here, I want to show you another part of your brain here called the limbic system. The limbic system is this collection of organs in here, like the amygdala, the, um, the hypothalamus, and, and collectively, this, this collection of organ, uh, organs in, in your brain, the, the limbic system, these structures are the epicenter of uh, your basic emotions, things like lust, fear, anger. Uh, this, this is like your, the, the, the most, one of the most primitive parts of your brain. And sometimes it needs to be kept in check by your frontal lobes, which can help regulate some of these basic emotions and to tell you when you need to calm down or it essentially helps you to be rational. Um, but as I've mentioned, the frontal lobe is a finite resource. There's only so much that it can do. Um, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of us are feeling overwhelmed just now. So what does it look like when we are feeling overwhelmed? Uh, everyone's gonna be different, but I want you at home, just think to yourself, um, what was it like for you when you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed? What are the emotions that you might experience? Do you notice that you're more irritable or that you get angry easily or that you just feel irrational um, and you get upset even though you, you realize that there's not a good reason to be upset? Do you find yourself feeling frightened or anxious? What are the thoughts that you notice? Do you notice that you have negative thoughts like, I can't do this, I'm not good enough, this is going to fail, um, or I just don't know what to do? Um, so we've got our feelings, we've got our thoughts in our head, but also we have our bodily sensations. So when you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, do you notice any changes in your bodily sensations? So for example, I know when I'm feeling very stressed, I get really bad heartburn. 
and indigestion. And that's one of the early signs, early warning signs for me that I'm getting stressed and overwhelmed. <clears throat> you might notice that um, you get more muscle tension or maybe you sweat a little bit more than usual or that uh, your bowel habits change or your sleep gets disturbed or your, or your energy levels gets disturbed. So when we're, when we're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, we've got an emotional response, we've got a cognitive response, and we've got a physical response. Um, one of the things I think a lot of people are finding hard right now with lockdown is a lot of our usual coping mechanisms have been taken away from us. Um, but I've got a really cool trick that you can do at home, whether you are working from home, whether you're furloughed at home, whatever your situation is, you can do this neat little trick anywhere you are. So we're going to do a mindfulness exercise <clears throat> because a lot of the time when we're feeling overwhelmed, it's because we've got anxious thoughts that are based in the future and then negative depressive thoughts, which are based in the past. And mindfulness works by centering us into the present moment, centering us into the here and now. Um, so this exercise is called the five senses. <clears throat> it's really, really useful if you uh, are feeling overwhelmed by uh, negative thoughts. And it is an exercise which you get better at with time because it's all about training your focus of attention from the internal world of what's going on in your head um, and also with maybe with even with bodily sensations, but training your, your focus of attention to become aware of the world around you. So focusing the shift of your attention from the internal world to the external world. Um, so before we do this exercise, I want you to get just nice and comfy. Just sit, your bum in your seat, your feet on the floor. First thing I want you to do is just take five deep breaths, okay? The reason why we're doing this as well, this is another really cool little biofeedback hack. We're basically reversing the, have you heard of uh, flight or fight? So that's when our body tells, so our, that's when our mind tells our body that you're in danger. <clears throat> and that you need to prepare to escape from this danger. So your mind tells your body and your, your heart, your lungs, your, your sweat glands, you need to prepare to escape from this threat. So one of the things that your mind tells your, your lungs to do is to breathe faster. And so you, you hyperventilate when you're anxious or when you're scared. But what's really cool is that your lungs can speak back to your brain. So there's a nerve called the vagus nerve, which runs across your diaphragm. And when you take big, deep breaths, you stimulate the vagus nerve. And that's, it's like a remote controller going directly back up to the brain. It's one of the cranial nerves, which means that it goes directly back into the brain. And then when you, uh, when you do these big, deep belly breaths, uh, then the, the stimulation back to the brain makes you, uh, gives you a sense of calmness. So that's why we start the sex. That's the neuroscience for you behind why we do breathing exercises um, and why I'm going to ask you to take those big five deep breaths. Okay, so you're doing these deep breaths with me just now. Okay, now whilst you're doing that, I'm going to start by asking you just to shift the focus of your attention to the environment around you. And as we do this exercise, there's going to be thoughts that come into your mind or feelings. And that's OK. I don't want you to try and resist these thoughts or feelings, even if they're negative. I want you just to acknowledge and accept that they're there and say to yourself, I'm having these thoughts and feelings right now, and that's okay. Um, and then each time that happens, I want you just to shift the focus of your attention back to the world around you. So we're going to start off 
with five things that we can see around us. And I want you to pay really close attention to the details. So pick something around you and really pay close attention to the shape the colour. What do you notice about the lightness or the darkness? Is it near to you or is it far? Just really notice the detail. So when you do this exercise yourself, I want you to see if you can train your mind to just be really aware of five things that are around you, five things that you can see. Now, once you've done that, I want you to see if you can find four things that you can hear. And again, if thoughts enter your mind or if you have any emotional responses to things, that's okay. I just want you to shift your, your focus of your attention back again to these four things that you can hear. What do you notice about the sounds? Where are they coming from? Are they loud? Are they quiet? Are they near? Are they far? What were the pitch? Is it a high pitch sound, a low pitch sound? Really pay close attention. So we've done five things that we can see, four things that we can hear. Now I want you to pay close attention to three things that you can feel or touch around you. So for me, I can feel the hard, cold, wooden chair that I'm sitting on. What is it that you can feel or touch around you? Three things. What do you notice about the texture? Is it rough or smooth? Is it hard or soft? What do you notice about the texture? Use that sense of touch. So we've done five things that we can see, four things that you can hear, three things that you can touch or feel. Now I want you to pay close attention to two things that you can smell or taste. It's a bit of a tricky one sometimes because um, it might be that you can't smell or taste anything. And if that's the case, um, what do you notice about the sensations in your mouth or your nose? Are you aware of the sensation of the cold air entering through your nose or the dryness or the moistness of your mouth? And if you've got a dry mouth, go and get a glass of water. Um, the sense of smell is actually incredibly powerful for, for helping to ground you into the here and now. Um, I've, I've done quite a lot of work with refugees and uh, one of the things that's always quite popular is using uh, lavender oils um, to provide people with a sense of calm. And again, there's quite a lot of evidence in the literatures uh, with randomised control trials showing the beneficial effect of, of using uh, aromatherapy to provide a sense of calmness for people. Um, if you're having trouble sleeping at night time um, or uh, yeah, essentially having negative ruminating thoughts at night as well, you could put some lavender oil on your um, pillow. And again, that's been shown in trials to, to, to help people fall asleep. Um, but yeah, it's important not to dismiss this, the, uh, the sense of smell and taste. So our last, uh, our last one, so we've done five things that you can see, four things that you can hear, three things that you can feel or touch, two things you can taste and smell. 
And one last thing, I always like to finish on a positive. So I want you to, to bring the focus of your attention to one thing that you're grateful for. It can be something really big or it can be something really small. Um, something that provides you with some degree of happiness or pleasure. So it could be that when you smiled at somebody today on your walk, they smiled back at you. Um, it could be that you're grateful that actually it's quite a sunny day today. Um, or just that you notice that, hey, I've got a cup of tea in my hand and I'm just really happy about that. Just make me, make me feel grateful. It's, a, it's something small. It's not a big deal, cup of tea, but I'm grateful that I've got this lovely cup of tea to enjoy once I finish this video with you guys.